Welcome to Episode 2 of Let's Crack Historical Ciphers. If you're hoping for more videos about Zodiac's ciphers, don't worry. I still plan on making more episodes of Let's Crack Zodiac. Subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified about new videos. In January, graduate student Diego Lunardelli at the Federal University of Santa Catarina in Brazil sent me some enciphered telegrams to look at. He's pursuing his master's degree in history and is doing research on the history of the Brazilian government, specifically in the late 1800s and early 1900s. In his research, he came across some encrypted messages. The first is a message from Antonio Moreira Cesar, a brutal army officer known for putting down revolutions and ordering many executions and murders which reportedly earned him the nickname Head Chopper. His telegram is in Portuguese and is encrypted, but someone had already decrypted it and written it above the ciphertext. It's just a simple substitution cipher, so all you need is the key, which translates the cipher letters to plain text letters. We can also type up the cipher message in the powerful code-breaking software AZ Decrypt and tell it that the target message is in Portuguese. AZ Decrypt solves it very quickly. The message from Cesar to then-President Floriano Peixoto asks about dissent in the national military. President Peixoto was facing a difficult period of Brazilian history and had consolidated power in a centralized nationalist government. His loyal army officer, Cesar, apparently was warning him about dangerous anti-government factions in his own army and encrypted his message so no one but the president would read it. The second message Diego sent me was written by Ercilio Luz, an engineer who went into politics. He became governor of the Brazilian state of Santa Catarina in 1894, only a few days before sending this enciphered message to the national president, Floriano Peixoto. Jarl and I looked at this cipher and noticed it was probably not a simple substitution cipher like the first message. One reason is because if you count the number of letters, they match the expected counts of letters in normal Portuguese text. That wouldn't be the case for substitutions, since the letters would have changed. So we suspected transposition, which preserves the letter counts but rearranges them somehow. Another hallmark of transposition ciphers is that you'll see some periodic behavior, similar to the period 19 clue we saw in the Zodiac Killer's 340 cipher. In this case, Jarl noticed that if you rewrite the cipher into a 15 column by 22 row grid, a whole lot of repeating bigrams and trigrams show up. But these repeating patterns don't show up as strongly for other grid sizes. Here's a way to see this clue in AZ Decrypt. We can load the cipher and run the Find Plain Text Direction tool using trigrams. In the results, we see that it finds a strong signal from the trigrams at period 15. So period 15, the width of the grid, is a very strong clue. In fact, once the cipher is written this way, it became obvious that the plain text can be read simply by reading from top to bottom, like this. In the deciphered message, Ercilio Luz writes to the national president of Brazil, Floriano Peixoto, about pressuring municipal leaders to help elect Felipe Schmidt, an important regional politician at the time. This secret message may shed light on the authoritarian regime in charge of Brazil in those days. The third mystery message Diego sent me was written by General Valli to President Floriano Peixoto. Like the first cipher, this one ended up being a simple substitution cipher and is easily decrypted using frequency analysis or a Z-decrypt. The deciphered message shows more of the regime's secret politics as Peixoto and his loyal allies sought more power using codes to hide their plans from enemies. I'm grateful to Diego Lunardelli for sharing his research with me. Revealing these secret messages is important for his master's thesis as he uncovers more details about the history of his country's government. It's exciting to unlock these old enciphered messages, especially since they were originally meant for only a select few people to read them. Through Diego's research, the world will see these messages for the first time. I look forward to reading his master's thesis when he finishes it.